So you've been training for 15 years. Are you someone who trains daily, five, six days a week? You hang out with Doug? Do you train similar to Doug? Like, where did it start and how has it evolved, basically? Where is it now? Yeah, so when I started at 17, when I first found the gym, I, it was actually by accident. It was my senior year of high school and I needed an elective to fill. Usually, like, you're about to graduate. I just needed something in my schedule. So I saw a class, fitness and conditioning. I had no idea what it was, but I was like, I'll do this. It seems easy enough. And it was essentially a class in my high school designed for football players and basketball players to stay in shape in the off season. And it was all based in the weight room. Through high school, I was a soccer player, uh, which is funny because Doug also was a soccer player. I think there's something to playing soccer growing up and becoming a good bodybuilder for a variety of reasons. I think like soccer players, for some reason, they can become great bodybuilders. So if you're a soccer Dude. player and you're young, there's hope for you. Yo, Siobhan Cunningham, nine time natural bodybuilding world champion at the pro level soccer player. That's funny. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm telling you, man, there's something about Dude, an average soccer game, 90 minutes, you're running six to eight miles a game. But not only that, it's explosive. It's stop, go, change direction. So you need like slow twitch, fast twitch. Your capacity to work hard is very high. And I noticed that yeah, for me. True. So I was in the weight room with football players, basketball players, and I was like 145 pounds soaking wet my senior year of high school. Cause I was also not only soccer, but a cross country runner and a mm. track runner, long distance track, the uh, 1600, the mile and the two miles. So I was like full distance, but I was definitely a hyper responder when it came to weight training. So I carried that from senior year of high school into college. I would go to the college rec center with my buddies. I joined a fraternity and I had a group of buddies in my fraternity. We would, we would go to the gym consistently. And throughout college, I was able to gain probably 30 pounds, not all muscle, obviously, but a, a substantial amount of muscle. And dude, like this has to be consistent for anyone at a high level. You got to work hard, but also know what working hard is. Mm. And from growing up in sports, I knew what working hard was. I think a lot of people are at a disadvantage in many ways. If they didn't grow up playing organized sports, when they get into the gym, they just don't know what working hard truly is and how to push themselves. When you're in that spot and you continue you going during a set. I was taking all my sets to failure. I was going super hard. I was arguably doing way too much. I would get sick frequently. I was almost like psychotic with it. Like I would go real hard and I was right. just on a bro split. I was just in a phase early 20s. I'm binging information, trying to learn from the best. There were way less authorities online at that point. I was basically on the bro split. So like obviously Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday legs, Thursday shoulders, Friday arms, and then on the weekend, I would either not train or on Saturdays, I would do a full body workout five, six days a week consistently 50 weeks a year I was doing it and that's how I've been like I've never taken more than a week or two off a year since I started at 17 not not one year like I have been very very consistent with training because I, I need it dude it's part of my DNA like I need it to be right. at my best I don't I don't feel right without it um, it's my medicine so but throughout the years I hit a pivotal shift in my training at 25 26 where I was living in DC right around the time I discovered Doug it's when I started taking online classes clients. I was also a full-time accountant, which is what I went to school for, but I started taking clients on the side. I also started training with a trainer at the gym who had done competitions at that point. I had ne never competed or anything. And his name was Dell. Shout out to Dell if you watch this. And he not only was a physique competitor, but he was a power lifter. Mm -hmm. And he got me into compounds, like taking my compounds seriously. I wouldn't squat all the time. I was like, you're a true through and through like bodybuilder, dude. I would go in and hammer all the machines, leg extensions, leg curls, leg press, but I wouldn't take squats seriously on back days or posterior chain days. I wouldn't deadlift. I never deadlifted until I was 25 or 26, just because I was ignorant. It's not because I was like actively avoiding it. I didn't understand the utility or the benefit of it, of deadlifting. So right at 25, 26, I really have like a demarcation in my mind of where I shifted my training into focusing more on, okay, I want to improve my compounds. I want to improve my bench press. I want to get better at deadlifting. I want to get better at squats. And I still stuck kind of on that bro split because I think a bro split, like even as an intermediate or advanced lifter, you can make it work if you have the work capacity and you can recover. It's all about your own body and the feedback you get if you're able to recover. So I kind of ran with that for the next two or three years. So by this time, I'm 28, 29 years old. And at that time, so three, four years ago, I shifted to higher frequency. Quick question, because you're about to transition now. How far away was your physique from where you're at now to where it was before you transitioned to the high frequency? Just curious. 
I think I've been, been able to progress for sure by shifting to higher frequency. My legs notably and my back have come up significantly since increasing from just doing legs once per week. It's kind of crazy when you mm. think about it though, to take a step back, like on a bro split, for example, we train the top half of our body, which Five is like days. what? Yeah. Yeah. Four days. 40, yeah. Probably 40% of our total musculature. I'd say the majority of our musculature is in our legs. So for the majority of your musculature, you have one day of training, but for your upper body, which is maybe 40, 50% of your muscle, you have four or five days, right? Make it make sense. You know? So I started considering this, there was a rise of like push pull legs or like for many advanced lifters, full body sessions, four or five days a week. I've never gone to that extreme. I'm not, I'm Mm. not opposed to doing it in the future, but I ran for two years, legs, push, pull, legs, push, pull. I would do that for six days, Monday through Saturday, rest day, Sunday. As of the last two years, I've been doing five days a week training. So I've been doing legs, push, pull, rest on Thursday, then upper body, lower body, rest. And I think I think just getting older and paying better attention to my recovery and making progress, I need the extra day of rest because I push my training sessions freaking hard. I'm hitting 20, 25 sets pretty damn hard, 10 to maybe 15 sets of compounds per session. I'm not messing around. So I just think that extra day is arguably not necessary and I could could do without it essentially. 